All right, welcome back to Snatches and Scotch. Uh, this is episode uh, ten or eleven. Not quite yeah. sure. <laughs> I feel special. It's like a <laughs> because uh, uh, we might cut up our last episode into two pieces. It's pretty long. It was really cool. Uh, we're here with Mike from uh, uh, CrossFit Yule, um, just outside Montreal. Um, and uh, Mike heard the podcast. He's like, "Yo, come to the gym and work out." And then uh, after looking up Mike and CrossFit Yule, I was like, "Yo, this guy is CrossFit famous." So <laughs> I'm like, because I remember watching the games uh, with with my wife, and I, and my wife was like, "Look, this guy proposes." His fiance in the exactly. middle of the games, and then I, I had no clue that was you. We we were talking back and forth on Facebook for like yeah. you know a while, and I, I had I had no clue that was you. And then I, all of a sudden, I I, I kind of clicked somehow, and I was like, "Holy smokes, this is the guy from the games!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. did it. Yeah, so um, we had, we had some pretty good conversations earlier on. We did a pretty cool workout. Um, and the, the one thing that kind of struck me was um, the opportunity you've been giving here with uh, Reebok uh, yeah. and opening yeah. up the first Reebok flagship gym in Canada. Um, and killing it, the city was profitable the first month, which is first month, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, how that started? So, he was a young guy who never imagined of owning a gym, and then all of a sudden, an opportunity kind of fell in his lap. And yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, the way it worked was, um, I've been in love in CrossFit since the very beginning. I started right, like like yeah. pretty much everybody, and uh, but didn't have any money. Yeah, and uh, working in a global gym. Um, I sort of, with my best friend there, we, we got certified level one and uh, met Reebok through that Globo gym. Yeah. Uh, and they were very interested in, in, in my profile and, and my best friend's profile. His name is uh, Jason Martin. He's uh, in Ontario. A few people know him over there, but um, sick coach. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to be very happy. I just mentioned his name. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, and so uh, Reebok was interested right away. And uh, uh, it was kind of a surprise. I was really honored, and still today, like, yeah. to have the opportunity to have this gym there. Yeah, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, awesome. Sick. We worked very hard, though. Like it's, uh, I have to say, we uh, we try to keep it um, as nice as possible, and yeah. we try to have the uh, the highest quality coaching as possible. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's a it's a you know it's a it's a lifestyle. Like from from owning the gym yeah. to coaching and to being an athlete. The one thing I like about. Um, this gym in particular, I've been to a bunch of uh, different CrossFit gyms, and um, I mean, I've only done one workout here. It's my first kind of impression of the gym. It is a good impression. Um, one thing I really like about this gym is that it's a huge, huge gym, and it's like a fun, fun playground. Yeah. But it doesn't lose. It doesn't seem like it's lost that essence of what CrossFit is. Of um, a lot of times when we see really big, big gyms with a, a ton of members, mm-hmm. they kind of lose the spirit of CrossFit. And it becomes a numbers game, yeah. um, and that's kind of frustrating, and annoying. Um, my gym is very small, so we're all very, very tight. We're all very, like, you know, it's close good. community. Uh, you just said, you know, your first client was at your wedding. And yeah. it's a destination wedding, right? Yeah, it's a destination yeah. wedding. The guy, so, uh, the yeah. guy signed up, and uh, he's part of our family now. He's yeah, best friend. Sick. So, like, it's nice that you guys are a big, like, a big gym, um, a huge CrossFit gym, but you haven't lost that, like, closeness. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, very friendly to everybody who walks in and stuff like that, which but is great to see. The cool thing is, you know, we've always seen the difference between CrossFit, the sport of CrossFit and CrossFit for, for everybody. So we really make a separation in, in, with that, yeah. right? And it helps us build a community, right? We're number one on our, on our community here. We, like you saw at like the beginning of the class, everybody high-fived you. Yeah. Anybody who's new in our classes or anybody trying out off the street yeah. will receive high-fives, will know their name forever, they're going to be yeah. welcome forever. That's the number one thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, now, we have also set up in the gym so we don't lose the energy yeah. when we have a big or a small class, right? Mm-hmm. We don't, because of high ceilings, huge surface, uh, we don't want to lose the energy of that, that proximity that we have with yeah. others. And uh, it's, it's extremely important. There yeah. are the high-five rules here. Like, it's a, it's a really big gym, but working out with a bunch of people, you don't feel like you're on your own. Like, you're still pretty close to everybody, and oh, you're yeah, still yeah. interacting quite quite a yeah. bit. So, yeah. Yeah, I really I really uh, like that about your gym. So, cool. um, why don't you tell us about how you guys started? So, uh, Reebok came with a proposal to you, and exactly. you had no clue what you were doing. You are kind of just, you know, thinking, hey, I'm going to give them some advice, and they might give me some money for it. And then That's uh, a- something happened. <laughs> so, I was the... I'm a kinesiologist, right? Yeah. And uh, became sort of an expert, like all of us uh, in, in CrossFit, really looking into what CrossFit was. Uh, had no marketing background or business background, and that's where what Reebok had. And uh, yeah. when they came, they really wanted to open this gym in, in Quebec yeah. and uh, try to represent as well as possible East Canada, uh, just like Reebok One would do in Northeast uh, the U.S. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so when we started, really, I, it was more to... Uh, 
to spread the word of, of fitness yeah. at the Reebok level. So what that means is uh, Reebok was able to, to uh, they gave us the, a good way to spread what CrossFit was, right? With, yeah. with great advertising and great, uh, great promotion on, you know, CrossFit's for everybody. Yeah. And uh, that's really what we do here. Like CrossFit's absolutely for everybody. Yes, we're trying to send athletes to the, uh, to the regionals and obviously it would be sweet to see that at the games. Yeah. But that's not our main goal. Yeah. The main goal is to change people's life. Uh, yeah. it's, it's super, super important. Yeah. So, and we can't forget this, right? We can't have. Uh, I'm super happy if you back squat 500 pounds for multiple reps. I'm happy, <laughs> but uh, I honestly prefer to see you improve from from uh, from one day to another, whatever improvement you have. Right? Yeah, celebrating the small stuff. Yeah, yes, right. exactly. A little closer. There you yeah, go. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I I totally agree. Like we see gyms who um, started that way, and then they kind of transition into like being successful with like competition. Yeah, yeah. And then they focus all the energy on their competitors. Yeah. And then they kind of like brush aside their, their regular yeah. members and kind of just tell them, hey, knees out, elbows up, and then kind of walk away. Which yeah. is kind of BS. You know what well, I mean? So Some gyms are really able to do this. It's, mm. it's awesome. But um, again, like there's so much more uh, potential for a gym when you have um, uh, many athletes that come from zero background. And, yeah. you know, we have people here that, you know, they walk in the gym and what's your main goal? Losing weight. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's a great goal. Uh, these people now have lost weight. If you ask them the new goal that they have, if this fly around, <laughs> uh, the new goal that they have now is uh, uh, they just want to be fit and healthy just to play with their grandkids. Yeah. Right? So uh, this that's just, just wonderful. We have this member here. Her name is Giselle. When she came here, uh, first session, we had to call 911. So we thought we wow. lost a member. Like, oh, my God, it's <laughs> super freaky. Like, you're like, oh, my God. Uh, she's lost probably something close to 50 pounds now. And yeah. uh, I call her skinny. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's yeah, awesome. That's cool. All right. So uh, it changes people's life. And that's the greatest thing that we could do here, right? Yeah, that's the main goal. Main goal. Yeah, yeah. we can't forget it. Like, it, we, it's a constant thing that we do every week. And, uh, um, uh, and, then, and then if it happens that we see... A super sick athlete uh, because his background was uh, hockey or football. Yeah, that's yeah. a bonus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we don't. Uh, we'll welcome anybody. I'll program for everybody. Yeah. Uh, we even allow other other programming on the site. Like for example, Invictus yeah, has yeah. been uh, has been pretty impressive yeah. with, in terms of results. Yeah. But um, uh, but that's not our main goal. That competitors uh, programming. Yes. Invictus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I heard, so I heard some good things. We about look that. at that one, and uh, now we're also looking at Ben Bergeron. Which is pretty Everyone's cool. jumping on that. Eh? Like, I know, I know a bunch of people who are like on Ben Bergeron's programs. Now, well, like, it's uh, it's very efficient. Yeah, uh, and it's not too long, right? It's not too long. That's yeah. exactly right. Invictus can you know last forever. Yeah. Um, but but you know Ben Bergeron is a good approach. So yeah, yeah we have we're like it's super open. Yeah. Uh, again, it brings it it brings it to the goal of changing people's That's life. That's awesome. Right? Yeah. That's so good. I think if you have that at your essence in the gym, then yeah. you're gonna be successful regardless. Because once you start like losing track of that mm -hmm. and focusing on either like you know the athletes or either on the numbers or either yeah. on you know this is my gym my program my way you know f you if you want to do invictus exactly. you know what i mean go get a garage gym because well, um, there's places like that right so mm -hmm. once you if you lose essence of like you know basically i open up a gym because i want to help people yeah and and if, if i lose sight of that then yeah. i'm probably gonna fail <laughs> well the thing is we were lucky enough like at the beginning of this gym yeah uh, just a bit before uh, Reebok sent us to Kenton at Reebok One, mm -hmm. and we spent a few days. And Greg Glassman was there, so yeah. imagine, like you see, uh, yeah. for us, it's like it, God was there, right? Yeah. And uh, um, I think he uh, he stamped it on us the fact that we have to aim for excellence. And at the beginning, you don't really get it because you're like, oh, all right, I'll aim for excellence. It's not a problem. It's, yeah. it's logic what you say, but but you don't really understand yeah. until numbers come in, into play. So as an owner. Um, when numbers come into play, you may lose track of what you really have to do. Yeah. But I've noticed that, you know, when times are good or times are bad, I just have to get out of the office, go coach well, change one person's life yeah. or help them just a little bit from yesterday. And then all of a sudden, it just, it just erases all the problems and everything goes well again. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's like if you have control on bringing back the, the you know, the good, the good weather, and uh, yeah. it's just aim for excellence. You only have control over what you have control over. Exactly, you and can't it's, really it's written about the stuff you don't have control over. Yeah, it's it's written yeah. on our uh, in our offices. Yeah, and in the staff room, aim for excellence, and nice. uh, uh, yeah, and yeah, money is just secondary. I it's think, I think, yeah, it's it's, it's important. important, yeah, but but it's secondary, yeah. and it's a uh, you 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 see more of that money coming when you're focused on the excellence. Right? I, so. 
I, I agree with that. Like, um, I think when Glossman's talking about aim for excellence, yeah. I think he goes, I think he means beyond just coaching because oh, yeah, wait, wait. having a gym has nothing, well, not nothing, has very little to do with coaching. Like, coaching is very, very important. It's 10%. But you can, you, yeah, you can get a good coach. You can, you can, you can learn to be a good coach over time. But uh, there's more to that. Being excellent is like having excellent bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. And, and he oh, talked man. about that, right? Like oh, not man. having a dirty bathroom. Exactly. Um, being excellent means uh, welcoming people when they walk yeah. in. And, and it also means keeping your books. And it also means knowing your numbers. And yeah. it also means knowing your members' weaknesses and strengths. And it goes beyond just coaching. It, yeah. it, it, it applies to business systems as well as, you know, the fitness it's cool. aspect. It's cool that it. you mentioned that the bathrooms because... Um, uh, we're actually now in the plans of renovating and stuff. Yeah. It's been almost three years that we're open. Yeah. And uh, and so obviously bathrooms take a beating. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like uh, like a little mini holes in the wall and stuff. So we need to repaint and stuff. So yeah, yeah that's uh, that's super important. It goes beyond beyond the coaching. And uh, but if we come back to the coaching, it's like really, it's really that ten percent of knowledge mm-hmm. uh, and ninety percent of personality. Yeah. So when you think about it. The personality is extremely important, but you only have 10% of your time of a, on, on a session to yeah. change people's life really with movement. Yeah. Right. And uh, so you, it's, it's about finding people that have that capacity. All right. So one thing that we've noticed mm-hmm. is the more we vary the coaches in classes, like, you know, you, people will have very different coaches. Yeah. Right. We, we tried for a few years where we have the same coaches at every hour. Yeah. Like, so you knew exactly who was going to be coaching mm-hmm. you. Um, it's awesome when you get to know the coach, but then you, you, you plateau too quickly yeah. because the delivery of that coach is not the same as mm-hmm. the other coach. And uh, our team here, we complement each other, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm not the best coach at all. Uh, Eric here is not the best coach, but we are at the same time are the best coaches together, together yeah. right? Uh, and that's, it, you can't be alone, right? You yeah. can't be alone. So that's the, that's, it's really cool. Yeah, that's super important. We, our last podcast, we talked to, uh, to, to some cool coaches and same mm-hmm. thing. They're together and they're yeah. always feeding oh, off Rock each and other. Uh, Kareem there? Yeah, Rock and Kareem. Oh. So like, um, it's, it's, it's really cool to have that, you know, connection with your coaches for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, they talk about a, bit, a bit about how you guys get your coaches in here because you, uh, you said there's an intern pro- uh, process that you, yeah. you so, do. Yeah. Um, and I, I liked what you guys did with like the homework and like it's yeah. almost like they're like his, his coaches are it's like they go to school yeah. and they have homework and then they have to report. <laughs> so uh, at the beginning, what we would do is uh, post an, an, adver- an advertisement on Facebook and say, "Hey, you're a coach. We're we're interested because yeah. we had to find coaches, right?" Mm-hmm. Uh, now it's only recent that we are like, okay, well, there's a few things that when we speak with other box owners, the main thing that comes back is hire within. Mm-hmm. Right, so uh, you see members that get passionate, athletes that are passionate, yeah. and then they get level one, and then you can build their experience there, right? As long mm-hmm. as they're guided well. Yeah. <clears throat> one thing that we didn't do before is was okay, you just observe and then hop in, and then you're a coach. Mm-hmm. Now what we do is that we ask homeworks, like okay, how will you prepare this? Uh, show me that movement, right? Yeah. And you you assist the person, you assist the intern, and. Uh, like our latest intern, her name is uh, Candice. Yeah. Uh, she's got gr- super skill in Olympic lifting and uh, um, it's worth it to use it, right? Mm-hmm. So I have her coach and last week, for example, even this week on snatches and, and, uh, and, uh, and cleans, yeah. uh, we had, um, uh, she was coaching and she even thought me stuff. I'm like, okay, well, and you know, yeah. uh, people look up to, okay, Mike is the coach, Mike is the coach, but Candice yeah. was actually Who's driving. The intern. <laughs> yeah, exactly, she was she's driving the class. I'm like, yeah. when I saw that, I'm That's like, cool. you know, and so uh, it's because it's a, a constant interest in what they're doing and, and constant question on how to better uh, anybody yeah uh, from uh, from the super athlete which is super tough yeah to the beginner which is super tough and mm-hmm. everybody in between right so yeah uh, that's the cool part yeah that's really cool I like that a lot actually because um, yeah. most you look at coaches who are coaches and then they have interns or like younger coaches and they'll be like okay I gotta I gotta help this person be a better coach mm-hmm. but they don't realize that a lot of times they're being helped right yeah. just because like if someone just says something a little different right or if you have a different experience or something then you know you can you can totally help people of um, course, of like course. I've 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 gotten help from people who aren't even coaches. Yeah. Uh, you know how everyone likes to be a coach sometimes. Yeah, athletes. Um, but yeah, athletes, and they'll be like, "Hey, you know, why don't you control your breathing? You know, this way." Yeah. And they know from like soccer or football, and I'm yeah. like, "Hey, you know what? That that kind of makes sense." Yeah, exactly. Uh, so like, constantly learning and being open minded is a huge, huge thing. I think, yeah. uh, especially for coaching. Yeah, and then that's that's a great thing when <clears throat> when you have like a, a, a big box because yeah. it's very important because a lot of people come in in one shot so uh, if you try to 
to change as many people as many lives as possible right you need yeah. to have those those difference into all your coaches you need to mm-hmm. be a you can't be all the same right so that's right the, if everyone's the same coach like, like the same as you yeah like it, <laughs> then, then like it's yeah. boring <laughs> another thing what's cool is that you can't have um we discovered it too like i mean probably in other gyms it's the same thing but a coach can't become the product Mm-hmm. You know, like if a coach yeah. becomes, this is now the owner talking. Yeah. Um, if a coach becomes a product, yeah. uh, then when the coach is n- doesn't exist, then the members don't know what to do. Yeah, right. CrossFit or the program has to stay the product. Yeah, people need to need to be able to uh, uh, relate to one coach and then another coach and uh, the whole entire yeah. uh, uh, gym, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so this way, they're not going to be afraid to go at six a.m. or at nine a.m. or, right. or five p.m. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a very important thing. Like you have to really uh, shine as a coach, yes, mm-hmm. but you have to you have to be able to uh, provide those 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 tips and cues so people evolve the right way yeah. at every hour with every coaches. Right? Yeah. So it's yeah, fun. that's that's absolutely true because I I left my gym this summer a little bit mm-hmm. to take a break because the first year of opening up, you know how hard it is. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was I was working a full time job. Um, I started the gym the day, no, the week before my wife gave birth to her second child. Oh, yeah, okay. And then, <laughs> and then um, I, was, I was doing full-time so work sleep. at school. Yeah, not much. <laughs> and then I was, I was running the gym in the evenings, and then we moved to a facility, which is even harder. Mm-hmm. And I was running the gym in the facility all myself, and then we, we finally got a second coach that we built up from within. Okay. Um, and then uh, I, I got one day off a week, <laughs> which is nice. Good. So after work, I can spend time with the family. Um, but this summer, we got a second coach who came home from, uh, she's actually from St. Catharines. She was uh, one of Ashley's coaches. Okay, uh, cool. And she was home for the summer, and she's she she, you she's out? really cute. She comes in, she's like, you know, I have a resume. I don't know if you're looking for a coach at all. And I'm like, yeah, I, I could probably use a break. Yeah. So then she's like, do you want my resume? I'm like, no, I already talked to Ashley. You're fine. <laughs> so then <laughs> yeah, she cool. started, well, and uh, she, she came out of nowhere, and people were like, where are you, where, you don't work anymore? Like, what, what happened to you? And I was only coaching like six classes a week. Well, and it allows you to do this, like yeah, a podcast. Yeah, cool. and focus on the business and do other fun for stuff. Sure, but, for sure, for um, sure. But uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to start coaching a lot more in September again. But um, you, you're right. Like, people are kind of thrown off a little bit. Uh-huh. And I'm like, no, you ha- she's a good coach. You guys need to deal with it. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but they, yeah, you know, and they, they, they learned a lot. You, right? Very, very different style from how I would coach. One hundred percent, right? Like, I my warm ups are not your workouts. I like to be exactly. mobilized and, and, and engaged, and then slightly warm, and yeah, then go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She likes to warm up for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a very different feel, well, and 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 the members, some members didn't really enjoy the long warm ups. Mm-hmm. So others are like texting or asking them, "Hey, can you give me that warm up that we did? I want to add it as part of my program at home." And well, it's you know, uh, vary as much as possible, yeah. right? So uh, um, if you're able to do that. Then, then the members, without realizing it, within six weeks, twelve weeks, eighteen weeks, they're going to change, and and yeah, and, and then even one, better. Yeah, and they'll wake yeah. up one day and say, "Hey, man!" And uh, and usually, here what's funny is you probably have that in your box too. Is uh, <clears throat> you have members starting, and then after three months, you're like, "Oh man, I'm always, I'm never finishing first in the workout." But then yeah. the beginner comes in, and and they smash that person. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh my god, I just, uh, you know, I just realized that I'm actually good. I can do yeah. it." Yeah. Uh, What's cool too is now we have a lot of members um, that sign up to a scale competition, RX mm-hmm. competition, and they did not know uh, that they could do it. Yeah, and now they they use that as a a benchmark to come back to the gym and and, and they go themselves. harder at the gym. Yeah, yeah I've cool. noticed that. I've, I, we were talking about this earlier. I noticed that we were um, we started doing a couple of low competitions <clears throat> only because one of my members wanted to compete, just one. Yeah, and I was like, all right, I'll be your partner. You know, because she was very shy yeah. and very like you know scared. Um, and I'm like, you'll do fine. Don't worry. We'll do our X. And if you can't do it, I'll take over. Mm-hmm. No, no worries. Mm-hmm. And then other people kind of started competing as well with us, my brother and somebody else. Yeah. Um, and we actually did pretty good. We, I think we came in third place in our <laughs> first competi- <laughs> competition. <laughs> but that's cool. And, uh, and she had a hard time with some heavy weight and some skills, but like she still did very well, right? She's down herself. We still did well. well. And then our second competition, we had, I think, six teams, <laughs> wow. like six, co- six uh, doubles. Okay. Right? Uh, and then we came in three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> we came. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So we, we did pretty good. And and, uh, and now they're all like very, very ramped up about competition. Well, that, that's a good thing. Right? Yeah. It's uh, working out together or, or, or competing together or going into an individual competition with people that are gonna, about to do the same thing as you. Yeah. Builds up team or friendship and stuff. Like yeah. We have a, for example, with, with Candace, she's been here for a long time. I don't know exactly how long, but like over like two years mm-hmm. 
she recently just started to be an intern and uh, you know how owners you try to have uh, weekly meetings and it's always super hard because yeah. you're overly busy well my meetings with uh, Candace is uh, she interns in my classes mm -hmm. on, on the weekends yeah. and uh, and we committed to work out together in, in partners workout nice uh, right after with members and stuff so it's fun mm -hmm. because she pushes because i'm in her team i push yeah. because i know she's gonna push yeah and we try to it inspires people right yeah and uh, um it brings us closer as coaches and it's, yeah. it's awesome like okay, right now i'm looking forward to saturdays and and people are like oh man okay what time are you what time are you coaching yeah. what time are you training and then uh, so that's important for team building yeah uh, but there's different ways to see it right yeah uh, another coach is our, our manager here her name is valerie mm -hmm. uh we love breakfast i love food yeah. so we go for breakfast for stuff so that's, it's not just perfect, about yeah it's not just about working out it's just you know yeah getting together with meeting up yeah. yeah that's one thing i'm guilty of i haven't been able to focus like weekly with well, meeting up my coaches it's, it's been tough I think it's not just you it's everybody I was like that too yeah. and then uh, my, my buddy Jason I was just talking about, mm -hmm. about um, <clears throat> she, she he suggested that um, we created a, a secret group on Facebook yeah so uh, you don't make it to advertise anything you just make it between your coaches yeah and um, and in that group you share stuff like whatever you want to talk about you keep it serious and you keep it CrossFit yeah um, but we share articles we may have read or mm -hmm. um, I love sharing PRs like I was telling you earlier yeah Like I coach in the morning now. It's been two weeks. And um, if you see a PR in the morning, the person that coaches at night never sees that person. But on yeah. Saturdays and Sundays, uh, now they know each other. So this morning, you know, like, a, oh, hey, Costa, one of our members, oh, yeah. you, you did a PR on Tuesday or on Monday on your back squat. Well, yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody knows it because you yeah. posted about it in our group, right? That's right. Uh, that's a cool concept. It's a cool thing. A good platform to, uh, to chat, right? And Facebook, yeah. everybody has Facebook. I like that, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, cool. that sounds really good. Yeah, it's fun because, yeah, it's always uh, you learn also, right? That you're uh, yeah. you're uh, you're not at the box, and you see one of your coaches uh, sharing information. You just read about it, like, hey, yeah, good point. Yeah, right. And you know also about injuries. Yeah. You know, oh hey, yeah, uh, that's right. right. Communicating guy, about injuries. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, hey, watch out, guys! If you ever have uh, this guy in your class, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to tell you it hurts there, but you really can't do those movements. Just yeah. be careful. Yeah. Um, so this way you scale faster. Mm -hmm. That's an you, you add service, right? Because you come like, yeah, you know, yeah. you have something at your hip. How do you know? Like, oh, yeah. I know. Just you know. My my, <laughs> my members we're pretty small still. <clears throat> my members have like my my cell phone number and my Facebook <laughs> and we're almost all friends on Facebook and I constantly get like little messages like hey I went to a chiropractor today yeah, can't go overhead cool. for a week <laughs> or like <laughs> so we're not we're not as big yet but yeah that, that's definitely the communication with no, no, but that's, it, that's it like yeah. whatever size you are communication yeah. is key yeah yeah, yeah. So. so who programs for the gym is it you that programs yeah it's me so <clears throat> I program for everybody yeah right um, and I program for a few athletes yeah uh, like very few because I'm I'm I have to. I have to admit it. I'm very new to this. Like mm -hmm. uh, when you, I look up to C.J. Martin, Ben Bergeron, even Kareem from Pro mm -hmm. One, yeah. uh, and I constantly learn. And um, it's it's a little scary to take an athlete that really wants to go to the the regionals mm -hmm. and start his programming. What if you screw it? Right. That's the yeah. biggest fear of every coach. So I have a few athletes that are doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing well. I think uh, yeah. for the next comp zoo battle competition, yeah. I think some of them are going to qualify. Nice. Uh, now, I hope I don't speak too fast. But, <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, and so but we have also an elite team here uh, mm -hmm. with my other buddy, Andrew, and he's, uh, he's one of our coaches as well. And uh, they do Invictus. Invictus cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that, that's fun. Yeah, we, we were talking about programming um, <clears throat> last podcast and with, with Krim, and I was saying, like, you know, as a coach we mm -hmm. constantly doubt ourselves because 100%. if you're i think that if you want to be a good coach you have to then doubt. you're gonna you have to doubt because that means you're constantly trying to get better and yeah. learn you right question yourself if you if you don't question and doubt your programming then you're just a cocky ass yeah yeah and you, you just you just assume that you're yeah. the best and you can't yeah. you can't that's uh, yeah so you yeah so like um that doubt thing is normal and and my whole thing is like um it's it's trying to find that confidence to say okay this is my program this is why i'm programming this is why it makes sense and this yeah, is yeah. this is and at the end of the day you're experimenting like poor athletes <laughs> 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 hope they don't get mad but we're just experimenting with people and That's understanding what that what methods work best right and 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 different methods work work with different you well, know listen, individuals right listen i can i can admit it that sometimes i've written workouts on the board and then it's three two one go and you're like oh my god what have i done yeah. people are purple you see you see like you know it's yeah. it's, it's super difficult it's it's, <laughs> it's even dangerous but like greg glassman was saying during that time that we met him yeah. is uh, you fake it 
you fake it. You step back and you're like, all right, is it safe? Is it okay? You break down the reps and yeah. it, and then you get you go through. You learn from the experience. Yeah, you learn from and, it. And uh, nobody is uh, perfect right away, right? Like so, I, uh, I was I programmed, I think, a workout with sled with sled work. We have like a lot horrible. of sled in the back. We do a lot horrible, of sled work. Horrible. And uh, I, I I was a little overzealous with the weight, <laughs> and I prescribe. I think I prescribed seventy five percent body weight for um, a fifty meter sled pull, push. Okay. Uh, low. Low handles. Okay. And it was on, it was on concrete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like more than half the members couldn't move the damn thing. <laughs> so I was like, oh, oh yeah, no, it's tough. All it's right, tough. let's 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 step back and realize that you guys are new still. Well, you you, so. you learn right. We did a workout like um, last week. It was rowing, team part team team workout for yeah. partner wad, uh, sleds and rowing. Oh my gosh! Imagine so the sleds were pretty light, so you could. How just many people smash threw it. up? Anybody <laughs> threw up? Uh, not a lot, no, but, uh, but but people in classes yeah. would tell the other ones arriving for the next class like, like no man, call nine one one. It was just it was awesome. Yeah, it was it was super cool. Yeah. it was so horrible that uh, I always work out at, uh, on the off times, right? Uh, if I can, I'll jump into a class. But on the off time, I tried it with one of my buddies, yeah. and uh, uh, we were like, we were, we almost puked too. And like, yeah. oh my god, this is what we're doing. Oh my, god. yeah. And uh, and that was the hard workout of the week. If mm-hmm. you, uh, people still talk about it. But well, that's good. If that was programmed intentionally to be a peak workout, oh yeah, yeah, then that's, that's fine, right? It it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like people think, oh yeah, you know, programming, over programming and stuff is bad. But no, like if it's intent, if it's intended to, to, to well, peak, yeah, and yeah. then the next day you're gonna have like a nice little yeah. chill workout, then that's okay. That's perfectly yeah. fine, right? Well, that's a, that's something you have to also educate your members, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to tell them that smashing your face every day is not right. Yeah, uh, that you know you have some days cool, some days harder, and then yeah. and then in betweens, right? So I I made it a point to tell them now, like I built within my programming now, um, a, a lot of competitor uh, programming does it this way um like mm-hmm. bergeron and these guys do the same thing yeah uh you know this, today we're working at uh, you know 12 minute mrap 80 percent then we're gonna rest five minutes we're gonna do a 12 minute mrap again 80 percent yeah and they're like what's 80 percent that's tough eh? so it's also good to educate themselves about how much they can hold back and how much they have left in the tank and so yeah. we try to work with actual percentages so just lifting now on on our on our uh, metabolic conditioning try to say okay we're not going 100 percent right mm-hmm. like we're we're, we're don't go uh, we're not going to go super high intensity. We're going to yeah. go medium intensity today yeah. and then high intensity tomorrow. So well, they ha- they, it's it's teaching them that we do this for longer results. And, that's right. And, and a lot of people, you know, like everybody, we love ice cream, chocolate, and pizza. Yeah. Uh, um, we want to do it right now so we can afford eating. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have to teach people that it's not about that. It's it's about uh, long term fitness and long term health. Absolutely. And that obviously, w- that you can you know binge here and there but it's, yeah. if you teach well um and also with the percentage it's cool is people now learn how to write down their score yeah I was like, oh man what's my my 85 percent yeah i don't know like man you have to write it down and so they start writing it down mm-hmm. and uh, after a few weeks you'll see like okay 85 percent. i know what it is and uh, yeah i know how to move and yeah. i know yeah yeah that's that's very true and and that's the thing we want to train these guys for longevity for their whole lives too right so mm-hmm. uh, like you said like when people people want to come in crossfit the, the people who are generally attracted to CrossFit mm-hmm. are a little bit crazy, right? Because they <laughs> yeah. like they like beating yeah. themselves up physically, and they exactly. like that inflicting that amount of pain. Because yeah. you get the endorphins after, and it feels good. But um, they want to go hard all the time, yeah. right? And sometimes they feel they're like, ah, oh, I don't, I don't think like I had a really good workout. It wasn't good enough. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, dude, you just mobilized the, the, the hell out of those sh- shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, we're gonna we're gonna snatch next week, yeah. and you're gonna get a PR because you're gonna be in much better shape because yeah. you've been working the past five days know a lot more under mobility with shorter lifting so like but they don't really understand that and i mean it's just it's educating again like you yeah. know it's like that beginner that doesn't see the improvement until a new beginner walks into gym yeah. like oh my god yeah i'm actually very good yeah um that's why those mini competitions or in-house competitions or uh, events or whatever you, testing yeah. uh, is always good because you improve that's why writing down your your workouts and your results and knowing what you're doing yeah is uh, is awesome like we were just away for our wedding and mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> we were a pretty big group um and you, we didn't do much CrossFit there. We yeah. tried to do some team type uh, stuff on the beach there, but it's, you know, 45 yeah. degrees, humid, and the margaritas. Brutal. You know, the game, oh, yeah. you're not about to do that. But you're aware that you need to move. I'm like, hey yeah. man, it's been two hours that we're tanning. Let's stand up and go play volleyball. You know, yeah, like, do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the cool part. People yeah. are now aware that okay, they need to move. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so you know, how do you how do you encourage your members to write down their scores? Like, how do they, how do they keep track of? So uh, the the, well, the the best way we do is we first have the board 
Mm-hmm. And then second, we show them that it's as simple as a picture of the board with their phone yeah. and writing it down in their phone or in, yeah. in, in a wad book. Yeah. Um, Do you encourage the names on the whiteboard? Yes. So, yeah. except on weekends. Weekends yeah. is like freestyle. Let's fun. go. It's, f- it's fun. A fun. Yes. Yeah. It's a, It's really a lot of fun on weekends. Uh, during the week is very fun too, but the week is uh, is also very serious with uh, testing and, and mm-hmm. with uh, uh, measuring more stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so this way we write down. And then people get to know each other. It's like, hey, oh my God. And they look at the 6 a.m. class. Yeah. And uh, this week we were just joking around because uh, this guy Costa that comes at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. PR'd on many things. And so yeah. I spoke about him the whole day. And people are like, well, who the hell is Costa? Yeah. And He's so, a superstar. <laughs> exactly. And yesterday he couldn't make it to the gym. Yeah. Uh, and uh, members like, say, what, what did Costa do? I don't see his name, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's cool because yeah. uh, uh, they're now questioning what others do and they yeah. compare right I think I think a little, a little competition is fine and I think some people they're, you need you're it. always going to have some people who don't want to write, write on the whiteboard because they're like they feel inadequate or, or whatever yeah. it might be afraid or afraid yeah um, but I think competition is good for, for the most part like we were we were working on and it's just for fun mm-hmm. uh, but my wife and I were partners and then you were partners with uh, Candace with Candace yeah and, I know and you guys are like a, a couple of reps ahead of us and we're like Joy we got to transition faster because we're behind <laughs> and like we, we were miscommunicating we were too, like, with oh like the transition and I was like damn it Joy she did like an extra <laughs> rep I'm like no <laughs> well, we were close into the rig, but then I was, I don't know, I mean, he's walking to the rig, like, finish it, Candice, let's go, let's go. Yeah. So, and at but the it's end, good because I wouldn't have pushed normally, like, at yeah, all. Like, exactly. Like, unless someone else is just slightly ahead of me or well, whatever, that's, right? Well, that's so. the, uh, the relative intensity and the absolute intensity. Yeah. Well, I teach that through every class. It's like, it's yeah. like we teach them, look, guys, um, I'm about to say three, two, one, go, but with the scale that you have, mm-hmm. I am not able to say who's going to win this workout. Yeah. Because you're going to try to measure, like, let's say, friend, right? You've got, everybody has a different scale for pull-ups and then thrusters mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you're going to see people just going super super hard yeah. and, and at their scale they need to beat not only their time that they've written down from another previous friend yeah. hopefully with the same scale otherwise it's harder to compare mm-hmm. uh, but they also need to have that absolute uh, intensity which is compare yourself versus a coach or a partner or something and it's not because you don't beat that person that you yeah. didn't do good it's because Oh man! If this guy is a regional athlete, and you can you compare yourself uh, to this guy, like oh, I just finished Fran a minute after him. Yeah. But you know, a month ago it was five minutes. So yeah, you exactly. Know, that's the, that's the yeah. cool thing. People people finish Fran in like five minutes. They're like, oh my god, it took me five minutes. I'm like, yeah. when, when you started, it took you 15 minutes almost, and yeah. you were and you were you were doing like yeah like jumping pull ups. <laughs> yeah, and now it changed. Well, so, like but 10 you, minutes of jumping pull. We have this this girl who the girl who wanted to compete. Yeah. When she started friend, she was doing I think she was doing a green banded pull up. She was doing a lower weight in in terms of the thrusters. Yeah. I believe it was 45 pounds or 55 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, and her time was like nine minutes something. Wow. Just recently, she did like I think um, a four minute friend, RX. Oh, there you go. That, that's so, amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Well, so uh, that's. With that, people people know, and so and if you question your athletes all the time, hey, by the way, what's your what's your friend time? Yeah. How fast can you row five hundred? Yeah. Uh, and people are like, I, I don't I don't know, I don't really know. Yeah. Like I have athletes coming to me, like, hey, Mike. Um, uh, recently, I have this girl coming to me, like, hey, Mike, I think uh, I want to compete, and uh, mm-hmm. I think I want to do a bit more than what's on the whiteboard. I'm yeah. like, all right, okay, cool. Um, and, and she nicely asked me, can I can you can you program something for me? Yeah. Uh, like, okay, perfect. But I need your one RMs. I need your times. I need your. She doesn't know. You know she didn't know, right? Oh, so man. she had a few of them. And you got to know yourself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I need all of them. So yeah. she, I gave her a, a two, three weeks uh, uh, window. I'm like, okay, test yourself every time you come in. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. but I want to work out. I'm like, okay, yeah, but for me to program. Yeah. Well, I need to know your numbers. Otherwise, uh, I can't. My one arm are so precious. They're all ingrained right yeah. here. <laughs> well, yeah, we know them, right? Anybody tell us, even you ask me what my one arm anything is, I'm like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Good. I worked hard for that. <laughs> well, well, this is why the other, you're the owner then. Yeah. <laughs> now, you have to duplicate that to your members. That's the thing, right? And like, and that's, that's, that's the thing. We encourage people to, to, yeah. to constantly keep a track of that. We, we have a handful of people who are very passionate about like keeping track of that uh-huh. and the other people who just don't care. Don't care. It's fine. You, yeah. you can, but you, that's fine too. They're, you they're can't not in for it. it. They're not in for it for competing at all. They're, they're no. in for it to have fun and, and be yeah. fit. And, well, this is and where that's fine as well, right? That's where the coach comes and helps them. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh, you don't know your your eighty five. You're like, you know what? Yeah. It needs to feel this way. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. You know, yeah. and it's that's the fun part. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So if you uh, <laughs> someone just almost died in the back there. <laughs> flip. Well, he, oh, handstand he, walks. Yeah, one of our uh, new guys, and he's uh, yeah, handstand walk. He sees all the coaches do yeah. that. 
<laughs> nice job. So, <laughs> all right. So to wrap it up, if you have any uh, advice to give for someone trying to open up a gym, what would it be? Community. Just build. Focus on building a community. One hundred percent. Community. And then after that, and then, and then after that, just um, um, <clears throat> a, a, a box will never be the best box ever. Yeah. Um, but can be one of the top boxes mm-hmm. if if the coaches and if uh, the people that are running it know that they don't know. Like if you know you don't know, you keep learning. Yeah. All right. So this is the first thing: is community is number one. And We're, staying humble is number oh, two. Oh man, this, you yeah. know, like man, CrossFit gyms only have mirrors. Yeah. Like, and if we do, it's it's really for physio or kinesiology and stuff. Yeah. But not for CrossFit, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and it really bothers us to see a mirror because like it can really throw off your your position. Yeah. Um, but it's, if you have a tight community and if you're an, a, like a, a true person with the members, then that's awesome. And then after that, yeah, it's like constant learning. Like, yeah. And it's not just about CrossFit. Like, you just read about everything. Like, yeah. uh, we have a physio room on the other side of the wall. They work with us. Yeah. Um, I could be extremely cocky and say, hey, you know what? I know everything about a cross ball and a foam roll. <laughs> well, guess what? Next week, we're starting yeah. with uh, with uh, the hip mobility, and uh, yeah. this physio is going to come in and uh, help us out with it. It's right? awesome. So, That's so good. Uh, like, I can't wait. Yeah. So uh, yeah. knowing, being humble is, uh, is, uh, is a awful. big one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you're humble, I think the coolest coaches I've met uh, were just super humble. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, they were, they, like, when I, so when I, when I looked at, um, uh, when I did, when I w- looked at Ashley's programming, right, yeah. and uh, Kareem programs for her, uh-huh. so I asked her to take a look, and I looked at his programming, yeah. and I was like, wow, this guy knows his stuff, because, yeah, like, yeah. I looked at the programming, and I'm like, this is what I would do, but I never thought of doing this, and this is, mm-hmm. like, awesome, and, and, and like, um, you learn as, soon as, I, as soon as I saw his programming, and we did one of his workouts together, I was like, yo, I got to interview that guy, <laughs> <laughs> that's, why that's, yeah. that's why I came now, because, like, just like, um, and, and then when I, when, I, when I met him, I'm like, oh, this guy's like a really good coach. So like, I don't know if he's even going to talk to me. The guy's like, yeah, man, no, come man. by. Coolest dude in the world. Super cool. Made me a shake and gave me a shirt and everything. Like, super cool, cool guy. Super nice guy. And then Rock as well. And, and like, you came, came here. I don't even, don't even know you. And super nice guy. So Well, the, um, thing, the thing is, um, um, you were saying at the beginning, like, hey, Mike, I looked it up. And, and well, man, you're, you're a CrossFit superstar. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not a cro- famous a cro- on CrossFit.com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, not really. It's, it's, yeah. I didn't do anything. You just let it be. Yeah. And it happens. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. uh, and uh, you don't, there, you can't calculate those moves. Like, you yeah, can't, yeah. You can't, oh, I'm going to be famous. Yeah. Yeah, Rich Phone Inc. Right, yeah. <laughs> but we can, I, coaches and, and box owners, we can't. It's not like that. It's a just, just do put, like put one brick and then a second brick, and one day you have a beautiful wall. And it's yeah. a, it takes time. Just be a, and don't look at uh, just give, give, give to your community. Mm-hmm. Don't expect anything back, and then uh, it, it'll happen. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Kareem is already uh, extremely famous. Rock is known uh, uh, in Quebec for those uh, for those who know him. He's known since a long time. A lot of people respect yeah. these coaches, and yeah. and that's what's important because yeah. the the. You have they're open, right? You can talk to them. You can have you exchange information with them, and they don't need to, uh, to they don't need to brag about anything, yeah, right? So yeah. that's, that's cool. That's yeah, really cool. That's very cool. Yeah. So that's a healthy community. Yeah, build a really strong, healthy community. Community, let people know that you love them and care for them. That's why you're doing this. Yeah. And then, number two, stay humble and constantly learn. All yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, if you like the podcast, go to snatchesandscotch.com. Check it out. Uh, the video version, or go to iTunes and give us a five star review. Uh, and if you're in uh, in around the Montreal area, come to CrossFit Yule. You'll be welcomed. Uh, we and uh, it's a sweet little gym. All right. Yeah. Anything you want to plug in? Um, yeah. No. Uh, snatches and scotches is going to take uh, uh, take over Barbell Shrug. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> I hope uh, so. I hope well, so. Maybe one day. It will Canadian style for sure. Yeah, the Canadian in a few style. Weeks. <laughs> Barbell Shrug. It's <laughs> awesome, man. Hey, actually, they they I'm, I'm on one of their programs. The, the the, the guys from Barbell Shrug program okay. for me so like oh cool yeah yeah that's oh, what yeah. I kind of want to do this because like good information uh, and get get as much information to people out there as, uh, as much as possible and yeah. it's local and it's cool yeah of course yeah. And it's Canadian <laughs> yeah awesome. it's Canadian alright man thanks for having me thank you and uh, peace out yeah bye sweet hey, man, this is cool huh <laughs>